Hello my loves, Tony here from Teal Yarn Crafts and welcome back to my channel where we explore the joy of crochet through free patterns, product reviews, and tutorials. And today I've got something super duper special for you. Today I've got a tutorial for a delightful set of kitchen accessories to liven up your home this summer. Now whether you're a beginner crocheter or a little bit more seasoned, you're gonna love what I have in store. In the trio we have the charming towel, which you can lay over some baked goods or rest under your dishes while they're drying. We also have the Charming Cloth, which is a smaller version of the Charming Towel. And lastly, we have the Charming Pot Holder, which is double thick so you can actually hold something hot with it. Each of these pieces is made with an organic cotton yarn in gorgeous, vibrant colors. Now I designed this set in collaboration with my new friend and fellow YouTuber, Tiffany. Now she runs a channel called Crochet with Tiffany. She's got everything from interviews to tutorials, product reviews. If you don't follow her already, you really need to be. Now Tiffany made the traditional crochet version of this project and I went Tunisian crochet. Can you see the resemblance? Now, regardless of which technique you tend towards, I recommend that you try them both, especially since we've got these great tutorials. I've linked Tiffany's tutorial down in the description. Hey, honeybees. I am so excited to partner with Skillshare again this month. If you didn't know already, Skillshare is a learning community for the curious and creative. Millions of members visit this video platform to learn everything from design and illustration to how to run a small business and crush it at social media. Now, as an independent crochet designer and educator, I took my career in my own hands over six years ago, but even I still don't know everything about running a business. Thankfully, the experts at Skillshare have me covered. I recently found YouTube's Sorel Amore through her How to Pose in Photos video. But did you also know that she has a class on Skillshare? It's called YouTube Success, and I'm pretty sure it's changed my life. Sorel's class is all about building a successful YouTube channel based on authenticity and longevity. Within the first five minutes, I already had a clearer idea of who my channel was for, what I wanted to say, and how I wanted to connect with my audience and communicate my values. Just that little bitty mindset shift has already jump-started something in me, and I can't wait to share that through my content. Skillshare is full of these aha moments, and I know your moment is waiting inside of a class right now. There's no time like the present to invest in yourself, and I'm here to make it as easy as possible. Mosey on down to the link in my description for a one-month free trial to Skillshare. Now, this offer is only available to the first 1,000 friends who click my link, so head down there now. You'll be glad that you did. And you know we can't start crocheting without giving some love to our cup of caffeine sponsor. I had a whole outfit and makeup and everything planned, but it is so flipping hot today. So I am just on water for the rest of the day, which is exactly what I need. Today's cup of caffeine is brought to you by Miss Emma Berry. I actually have an aunt named Emma, so that's amazing. So Emma said, I have recently picked up the crochet craft and I am hooked. But seriously, having found your videos on YouTube, they have have been a fantastic source of information, guidance, and support. Your explanations are clear and easy to understand and follow. Thank you so much. And thank you so much, Emma, for watching. I appreciate it. And for everybody who's watching, seriously, I don't know if you've noticed, but the craft space here on YouTube took a bit of a hit with the last algorithm change. So every interaction that you have with this video, liking, subscribing, sharing, it goes even further these days. Alrighty, my loves, we are good and hydrated and ready to start stitching. So to keep this video from being a million hours long, we're gonna break this tutorial up into a few parts. I'm gonna start out with the materials, talking through everything that you need to make each of the pieces. And then we're gonna get into the stitches and techniques section. So I'm gonna walk you through the brick stitch tutorial as well as the Tunisian simple stitch, which you'll need for this project. And lastly, we'll take a closer look at each of the projects and I'll walk you through the finishing steps. You ready? Let's talk materials. To make the Charming Trio, you're gonna need DK weight 100% cotton yarn. Now I use Rico Essentials Organic Cotton. It's a lightweight and really strong cotton that comes in a wide range of lovely shades. It's machine washable, but it is recommended that you lay it flat to dry. Now you can find it here in the States on lugcrafts.com and from your local yarn stores. If you plan to make the entire Charming Trio, you're gonna need two skeins each of three colors. My set uses the color Azalea, which is this gorgeous, vibrant pink, cream, which is a nice neutral shade, and mustard because your girl can't get enough of yellow. 
Two skeins of azalea was just enough for the set, but to be on the safe side, you might wanna grab an extra skein. If you're swapping out this yarn, look for any DK weight 100% cotton or all natural cotton blend. Nitpicks Cotlin is a great choice, as is Hobie's Friends Cotton 8.8. I've linked the original yarn and these alternatives down in the description. In addition to the yarn, you're gonna need a five millimeter and a five and a half millimeter Tunisian crochet hook. I like to have the corresponding traditional hooks available as well for the bind off and border, but you can also use your Tunisian crochet hooks for this part. Now to round out the notions, make sure you grab a pair of scissors, a tapestry needle, a couple of stitch markers, and blocking supplies. The main stitch we're using throughout this tutorial is called the brick stitch. And we call it the brick stitch because it kind of looks like bricks stacked on top of each other. Now in Tunisian crochet, the brick stitch uses the Tunisian simple stitch. You can see those throughout here, but we also add in these little post stitches and I'll call them post stitches throughout the tutorial. Those post stitches are built on the front of the work and they create what I like to call our window panes. So we've got our cream inside the window and we have pink for our window pane. When creating your fabric, make sure that you start with the color that you want to be the frame of your window panes. And then your second color, your accent color is gonna be what fills your window panes. The brick stitch is worked over a multiple of six six plus five, let's grab our hooks and learn the stitch. Starting with my main color, which for me is gonna be this pretty pink, I'm going to create a slip knot and place that on my hook. The brick stitch is worked in a multiple of six plus five. I'm gonna do three multiples of six. So here we go. Slip knot is on the hook, yarn over, pull through for one, two, three, four, five, and six. There we go. There's one, one, two, three, four, five, and six is two. One, two, three, four, five, six is three. So there are my three multiples of six, and then it's also plus five. So I'm gonna chain five more. One, two, three, four, and five. So there's my starting chain for my sample. Now I'm going to rotate my chain towards me to expose the bumps at the back of my chain. That's actually where I'm going to pull my loops up to give me a nice clean edge along the bottom of my work. So rotating towards the back of my chain, I can see I've got one chain here. I want to find the second chain for my hook, which is right here. Get that back bump. I'm gonna insert my hook from bottom to top through that back bump, yarn over, pull up the loop, and keep the loop on my hook. I'm gonna do that for each back bump down the line, and I'll know I did it right if I have the same number of loops on my hook as the number of bumps that I started with. So six times three is 18, plus five is 18, 19, 20, 21, 23. So I should have 23 loops on my hook by the time I'm done pulling up my loops. Okay, so my magic number was 23. Let's see how many I have. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, and 18, 19, 20, 1, 2, 3. Perfect. So we've got our forward pass of our foundation complete. Now we can do our return pass. To start the return pass, I'm gonna yarn over my hook and pull through one loop to create a chain one. Then I'm gonna yarn over my hook, pull through two loops, yarn over through two loops, yarn over through two, until I have two loops left on my hook. So I'm working my loops off of my hook here on the return pass, and I'll need to change color at the end of my return pass, so I'll stop when I have two loops left. There we go, two loops left on the hook. I can now drop my pink color, but I'm not gonna cut it. I'm going to carry this color up the side of my work, but now I need to work with my cream. So I'm gonna leave a nice long tail, yarn over the hook and pull through those last two loops. Now for the next two rows of my brick stitch, I need to just simple stitch across. So we've got the first loop on our hook. We're gonna skip this very first vertical bar. We're gonna find this next vertical bar, which is in pink. I'm gonna insert my hook from right to left under that bar, yarn over and pull up the loop and keep that loop on my hook. And I'm gonna do that all the way across. Insert in the next stitch, yarn over, pull up the loop. Insert, yarn over, pull up the loop. 
There's a reason this is called the simple stitch. It's that first stitch that you learn in Tunisian crochet. So it's quite easy to do. Find the next vertical bar, insert yarn over, pull up the loop, all the way across until we get to the very last stitch. And I'll show you what we do differently there. So I've pulled up most of my loops already. The only one that I have left is my very last stitch. For the very last stitch, I can see the front vertical bar very easily and most beginner Tunisian crocheters will just insert under that front bar. But to keep a nice clean edge on the left side of our work, there are actually two loops that we need to find for this last stitch. One is that front bar. It's sitting up pretty right in front of you, so that one's easy to see. But there's also a loop that I like to call the shadow because it sits just behind that front bar. So there's our front bar. If we rotate this towards us, we'll see a loop just behind that front bar. So that was our front bar and this is our shadow, this little loop right here. So I need to get my hook under both of those loops. So the front bar as well as the shadow. I'm gonna grab both of those, yarn over and pull up a loop and that completes the last stitch. So I now am back to 23 on my hook and I'm gonna do my return pass. Yarn over, pull through one, then yarn over, pull through two, two, and two again. And this time we're gonna pull back until we've got one loop left on the hook and that's gonna complete our return pass because we need to do two rows in cream. All right, so that completes our first row of simple stitch in our accent color. Now we need to do another row, first loop, is on our hook, so that counts as our first stitch. We're skipping this very first vertical bar. Find your next front vertical bar, insert from right to left, yarn over, pull up the loop, and do that for each stitch across until we come to our last stitch again. We've reached our last stitch again. Remember that we've got that front vertical bar sitting here on the far left-hand side of our work. But don't forget to find that shadow as well. You can see it just there on the left side. Front bar is here, shadow is here. Make sure you grab both of those loops. I like to use the tip of my hook to shimmy right under those and grab them both. Yarn over, pull up the loop, then yarn over, pull through one, and yarn over, pull through two. And this time we'll stop when we have two loops left on the hook, because we'll need to change back to pink. So now we have two loops left on our hook. I can grab my pink color, yarn over the hook, pull through those last two loops, and now I've changed color back to pink. So for this row of our brick stitch, we need to simple each of the next four. First loop on our hook counts as our first stitch. We're skipping this first vertical bar, so we're gonna simple each of the next four. There's one, here's two, here's three, and four. Next, we need to do our post stitch. So first, let's find exactly where our post stitch is going to go. So this would be our next stitch here, but we're actually going to work in the stitch one, two, three rows below. So I need to track this down to my last pink row. I'm gonna find the front vertical bar of that stitch three rows down. It's right here, but we also need the back vertical bar. So we've got our front vertical bar here, to the right of this, it's a little tiny, but you can find it there, there's the back vertical bar. Let me bring you a little closer. Front vertical bar is here, back bar is here. We're gonna end up grabbing both of these. Let me show you how we're gonna do it. So with our pink yarn, I'm gonna yarn over the hook and I'm gonna use the tip of my hook to grab first the back bar then the front bar of that stitch three rows below. Make sure you're in the right one. So go to your next stitch, count down one, two, three rows, find your front bar, to the right of it is your back bar. So I've yarned over my hook, I'm going to dip down, grab the back bar and the front bar of that stitch. Yarn over the hook, pull up the loop, yarn over, pull through one, then yarn over, pull through two. And we're going to skip the vertical bar behind this post. So that's how we make our post stitch. From here, we need to simple five. One, two, three, four, five, and do another post. So that's the repeat for the row. Simple five and another post. Yarn over, count down one, two, three rows. Using the tip of your hook, 
grab that back bar and the front bar, yarn over, pull up the loop, yarn over, pull through one. That's gonna give us the height we need of our post stitch. Then yarn over, pull through two loops, and that completes the post. So you can see we're already creating that window. Next, we're going to simple five, making sure we skip that stitch behind the post. So here's simple one, two, three, four, five. And now we need to do a post stitch. Again, yarn over, track that stitch down. So one, two, three rows down, find the front bar and the back bar. Using the tip of your hook, shimmy under that front and back bar, back bar first, then the front. Yarn over, pull up the loop, yarn over, pull through one, yarn over, pull through two. So now we're towards the end of our row. We know that because we only have five stitches left. One, two, three, four, and our edge stitch makes five. So now we need to simple four. One, two, three, and four, and work our edge stitch. Front bar is here, shadow is here. So let me show you that a little closer. Front bar is here, shadow is right behind it. So we're gonna grab both of these just like that and pull up the loop. Now we can do our return pass, yarn over, pull through one, yarn over, pull through two, two, and two again. And we're going to change color at the end of this row. So we'll yarn over and pull through two until we have two loops left, just like that. So now I'm gonna move my pink to the side again and grab my cream, yarn over with cream, pull through these last two loops and I've now changed color. I'm gonna do two rows of simple stitch in my cream and then change back to pink. Join me once you've completed that and we'll do the next row of our post stitches together. So now I'm all done with my two rows of simple stitch. I'm ready to drop my cream and I'm going to change back to pink. So yarn over, pull through these last two loops with pink. So for this next row of post stitches, we're essentially doing the same thing. We're just changing the placement so we have staggered bricks. So we've got one loop on our hook already. We're skipping this very first vertical bar. We're gonna simple the next stitch and immediately follow that with a post stitch. So I'm gonna yarn over my hook, track down my stitch. So here's one, two, three rows down. I've got my front bar here. Back bar is hidden a little bit, but if I shimmy the work open, I can find it hiding right there. Insert my hook from right to left under those two bars. Yarn over, pull up the loop yarn over, pull through one, then yarn over and pull through two. Now I'm gonna jump right back into my stitch pattern. Simple five, one, two, three, four, five, followed by a post. Yarn over, track down the stitch, using the tip of my hook, grab that back bar and the front bar, yarn over, pull up the loop, yarn over, pull through one, yarn over, pull through two. Simple five, one, two, three, four, five, and my post stitch. Simple five, one, two, three, four, five, and my post stitch. I've got two stitches left in this row. I'm gonna simple the next stitch and work my edge stitch. Chain one and do my return pass. And again, I'm gonna change color to cream at the end of my return pass to continue in my brick stitch pattern. Two loops left. I like to move my pink out of the way, yarn over, pull through those last two loops. And now I'm ready to continue with my cream. I would do two rows of cream and then repeat this row of posts two rows of cream, and then this row of posts. Don't forget that you can find a full written pattern for this stitch in all of these projects over on my blog that's linked down in the description. So that's how we'll do the brick stitch pattern. Now, depending on which project you're working on, you may have to do a series of simple stitches after this. So all we would do is continue in simple stitch just like we've done for our other rows here in the brick stitch. 
but you just continue in simple stitch for as long as is written in the pattern. Now that you've got a good understanding of our brick stitch, let's move into the individual projects of our charming trio. The first project of our trio that we'll look at is the cloth. The cloth is made with a five millimeter Tunisian crochet hook and the corresponding traditional hook. First, I used my cream as my foundation and I made a chain of 35. Remember that our brick stitch is a multiple of six plus five. So I did six times five, which is 30 plus five, which gives me 35 for my foundation. I worked my foundation in cream and then I filled in my windows with my accent color, which here is the pink. Pink. So I worked until I had one, two, three, four sets of bricks, and then I did 16 rows in my accent color here in Simple Stitch for the top half of my cloth. And what you'll notice up here is that I worked my return pass until I had my two loops left. I just dropped my hook out, but my two loops are hanging out right there. So let's do the finishing steps together. For my finishing steps, I like to switch to a traditional crochet hook. It just makes it a little bit easier for myself, but you could continue to use your Tunisian crochet hook, whatever is easier for you. So I'm gonna insert my hook into the last two loops of the return pass for my final row and I'm going to yarn over with my cream yarn, making sure I leave a nice long tail. Here's my cream, nice long tail going on there. I'm gonna yarn over and pull through those last two loops. Now I need to do my actual bind off. So I'm gonna insert my hook into the second stitch here, yarn over, pull through the loop, and then through the remaining loop on my hook for a slip stitch. Insert, yarn over, pull through both loops, insert yarn over pull through both loops. So I worked my project in a five millimeter Tunisian crochet hook. I'm gonna be doing my finishing steps here with a five millimeter traditional crochet hook. So I'm gonna slip stitch in each stitch across the row until I get to the corner. For my very last stitch, I still wanna grab both loops of that final stitch, yarn over, pull through for a slip stitch. From here, I'm going to chain one and rotate. I'm going to be slip stitching all the way around my cloth, so now I'm ready to work down this edge here. I can find these natural holes that are left from my edge stitches, and that's where I'll place my slip stitches. My last slip stitch was placed in this stitch here, so I'm going in this stitch just to the left of it, or below it, really, for my next slip stitch. So insert, yarn over, pull through for a slip stitch. Make sure you keep your slip stitches relatively loose. We don't want any puckering or bunching on the edge of our work. We are going to block these. I think it just gives it a nice, clean, polished look. Just go slow, keep your gauge loose here. Now that we've worked that corner, I'm gonna chain one, rotate to work along the bottom. Now this is gonna be a little tricky. Remember that we started with chains here, so I'm gonna work under the loops of the chain, but it might be a little bit tight. So again, just go slow, keep your gauge loose, and slip stitch in each stitch along the bottom of our cloth. Now that corner is done, chain one. I'm gonna rotate and work up this edge. Again, just catching the loops of my very first stitch here of the row. So I'm gonna insert, yarn over, pull through, keeping my gauge loose. And I'm just gonna slip stitch in the end of each row. So I'm gonna stop here. You'll note that I have one stitch left and I did that on purpose. We're now going to do an invisible join here. So what I need to do first is lift my hook out Fasten off my yarn, leaving a nice long tail. I'm gonna lift that loop up and out of my work and thread it onto a tapestry needle. Once I have my tail on my tapestry needle, I'm going to take the tip of my needle and thread it under the two loops of my very first slip stitch here. Pull that through, and then I'm gonna thread it through just the back loop of what would have been my last slip stitch and come through. And what you'll notice is that it essentially creates what looks like a slip stitch there in the corner, and that gives me my invisible join. I'm now going to flip to the back of the work and weave in this end. I don't have any cream back here, but I'm gonna weave it into the back loops of my pink so you won't be able to see it from the front. 
and I'll just keep that tail close to the edge of the work so it's not super duper noticeable. Pull it through a few loops here. Doesn't take much. Now I'm gonna fasten off that end. From here, I just have ends to weave in and then the piece needs to be blocked. We're gonna block all of the projects at the very end. Now that our cloth is done, we can move on to our towel. The next project we're looking at is our towel. It has a very similar design to the cloth, but it's a little bit different. So here's a quick overview. So we're gonna be working with our five and a half millimeter Tunisian crochet hook and grabbing our main color, which for me was pink. I started with a chain of 59. Thinking about our stitch multiple, which is a multiple of six plus five, I did nine multiples of six, which gives me 54, plus five gives me 59 for my foundation chain. Then I'm gonna work in my brick stitch until I have three sets of bricks. And then I'm gonna follow that with one, two, three, four, five rows of simple stitch. Now let's talk about yarn management here. We're gonna carry the yarn up our work as we're working our actual brick stitch. But then when you transition to your rows of simple, I'm gonna fasten off that main color because we're only working in our accent. And we're gonna carry that cream color all the way up, but you will fasten off your main color, that pink, every time you do a set of bricks. So we have four sets of that repeat. So here's one, two, three, and four. And to finish off, we have a set of three bricks, but that last row of our brick stitch is gonna be our bind off, which we'll do together. So let's get to it. So what we have here is the two rows of simple stitch that would be part of our last set of bricks. I'm gonna insert my hook into those last two loops. Again, working with a traditional hook to do my bind off. I'm gonna then yarn over with my pink and pull through those last two loops. Now I'm going to complete my bind off like normal, but I do need to do bind off post stitches within this row. So I'm gonna bind off each of the next two four. So just with slip stitches, insert into the next stitch, yarn over, pull through the loop, and the remaining loop on the hook to slip that stitch, insert, yarn over, pull through both to slip it off, insert, yarn over, pull through both to slip it off. Just like that. So that was four stitches. So now my next stitch I need to do as a post stitch. And here's how we're gonna do that. Yarn over the hook, insert into the back and front bar just like we would normally do for our post stitch, Yarn over, pull up the loop. Yarn over, pull through one. And then we're gonna yarn over and pull through all three of the loops on the hook here. And that completes our slip stitch. Now we're going to slip stitch, bind off the next five. One, two, three, four, and five. And now we need to do another post. Yarn over the hook, track your stitch, one, two, three rows down. I've got my back loop and my front loop. I'm gonna insert into the stitch, yarn over, pull up the loop, yarn over, pull through one, then yarn over and pull through all three. Slip five, two, three, four, and five and then our post again. Yarn over the hook, track that stitch down. Using the tip of the hook, I'm gonna grab that back loop and the front loop. Yarn over, pull up the loop. Yarn over through one. Yarn over through all three. And we'll repeat this across the row. I slip stitched through my very last stitch and now we need to move on to the border. So the first part of the border is actually going to be creating a loop. I like to have a hanging loop in the top corner of my towels just to make them a little bit more practical. So to do that, after we finish the slip stitch into the very last stitch of our row here, we're just gonna chain 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10 and then slip stitch back into the stitch at the base of our chain. So right back into that last stitch. Just like that, and we've got a cute little hanging loop on the end of our towel. Now, just like we did with the cloth, we're going to slip stitch down this edge, slip stitch along the bottom, 
slip stitch through this edge and finish right up here. So slip stitch all the way around your project, join me here and we'll finish that last edge together. I've got a few stitches left here. One more. I'm playing a little bit of yarn chicken, but this is perfect because at this point I want to pull my loop up and out, thread that tail onto a tapestry needle so we can join this invisibly. Again, I'm going to use the tip of my needle here to get under the two loops of my first slip stitch of the round and then under the back loop of the last slip stitch of the round. And then after a little bit of shimmying, you can see we've got a nice clean finish there. I'm gonna pull this end to the back, weave it into light colors, weave in the remaining ends on my towel, and then this piece is done. So now let's move on to the third and final piece, and that is our pot holder. Our third and final piece in the trio is a hot pad. We actually construct it from two separate pieces of fabric, but we'll focus on the front first. So as you can see, we're gonna work in our brick stitch pattern for the entirety of the front of our project. We're gonna use a five and a half millimeter Tunisian crochet hook for this, starting with a foundation of 41. So six times six is 36, plus five gives us 41. So we'll work our foundation in our main color, starting with 41 chains. We're going to work until we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten bricks. And then we're going to finish up with two rows of simple stitch and our bind off is for our brick stitch pattern as well. So I'll zoom in. We'll do that bind off and the border together and then move on to the back piece of fabric for our pot holder. Now I have two loops left on my hook from when I did my return pass here in my accent color. I'm going to yarn over with my main color, pull through two loops to change the color. Now I need to do my bind off. So we're going to slip stitch four. So I'm going to insert into this next stitch. Yarn over, pull through both loops on the hook for one. Here's two, here's three, and four. Now we need to do our post slip stitch. So we yarn over, find the front and back bar of that stitch, three rows down. Insert from right to left, yarn over, pull up the loop. Yarn over, pull through one, then yarn over, pull through all three. We're gonna slip five, one, two, here's three, four, and five, another post. So find that next stitch, count down one, two, three rows, find that front bar and the back bar, insert the hook, yarn over, pull up the loop, three loops on the hook, yarn over, pull through one, then yarn over, pull through all three. Simple five, one, two, three, four, five, and our post stitch. Now we're at the end of this row, so we're just gonna slip stitch these last five stitches. There's three, there's four, and working under both loops of our last stitch, we're gonna slip for five. Chain one, we're gonna rotate, and just like before, we're gonna slip stitch down this edge, slip stitch along the bottom and slip stitch here. Join me when you get to this last corner. We'll finish off together and then work on the back piece of fabric. Last stitch here. And at this point, I'm going to fasten off my yarn, leaving a nice long tail, pull that loop up and out. And I'll need my tapestry needle to once again, make that invisible finish. Inserting my hook into both loops of my first slip stitch of the round and into the back loop of the last slip stitch of my round, making sure I don't catch any other loops and shimmy that together. Just gonna weave this into the back really quick to get it out of my way. So now that the front panel is complete, we can move on to the back panel. So the back of our work is just row after row of simple stitch worked in our accent color. So there are 33 total rows. And then to bind off, we want to slip stitch across, but in our main color. So after you slip stitch across in your main color, chain one at the corner, slip stitch down the left edge, chain one, slip stitch across the bottom, chain one, slip stitch up the right edge, and then Right before it's time to close this off, we're gonna complete that last slip stitch, 
chain 10 to create a little hanging loop here. And then we're going to slip stitch in the first slip stitch of the round. So that's how we get our hanging loop. And eventually these two pieces will come together just like this, placing our hanging loop in the top left corner. So my job next is to go weave in all of these ends from all three of our pieces, and then we're going to block them together. Alrighty friends, all three pieces are prepped for blocking, ends are weaved, everything's tucked away gorgeously. And even for this piece, we're gonna end up seaming the two together so you don't necessarily have to weave in your ends, but I'm the kind of person that like, it's gonna make my eye itch if I know that there's ends hanging out inside of there. So we're just gonna weave in all of those ends and now we need to block our pieces. So to block, we're going to need pins like these, as well as blocking boards and our garment steamer. So I'm going to start with our cloth. And I like to block my Tunisian crochet pieces face down. It just helps get rid of the curl. And since we did so much simple stitch, we end up with curling here at the top and a little bit down at the bottom. Now, I usually use my blocking combs, but for this application, I'm going to use my pins just to make sure I don't create too many holes in the bottom of my work. So I'm not gonna be pulling my piece at all. I'm just laying it nice and flat three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yep, we're just about eight inches on our cloth here. So I'm gonna pin it along all four sides. Now that it's all nice and pinned down, I'm going to grab my garment steamer, which I was preheating off camera, and then just lightly run this across the cloth. So we want to steam our piece until it's nice and damp and then we're gonna set this off to the side and work on our other pieces. So next I'm gonna grab two boards because I'm going to do the towel next. So again, face down. So I've got my little loop here at the corner. I definitely wanna make sure that's nice and open. So I'm gonna grab one of my pins, just kind of pin my loop so it ends up nice and open and then I can start pinning my cloth. A Couple minutes later and all of my pieces are dry, I've taken the pins out and you can see now that I've flipped them over that my edges are nice and flat. If you find that any of your edges aren't flat, especially with cotton, you can place your steamer directly on the fabric and nothing's gonna happen to it. So you can kind of press down on some of those edges as long as you're working with all natural fibers. The last thing we need to do is bring the two pieces of our pot holder together. So I have the front here and this is the back. I'm gonna flip the back. So we're looking at the wrong side. The tie is gonna be up here at the left, bring the front on top, kind of sandwich these two pieces together, and this is how they're going to come together. We're going to do what's called a back stitch, which is an embroidery technique to bring these edges together. So the first thing we need to do is get a length of yarn. I like to measure completely around my pot holder, just like this, and then I'm going to triple this. There's one, two, and three. I like, I like to have a lot more yarn than I think I'll even need. That way I don't need to add more yarn over the course of seaming this together. Next we need our tapestry needle and I'm gonna thread my yarn onto my tapestry needle just like that. We've got a really long piece here so just make sure you don't get that tangled. So we finished our work in our main color. So we're going to be working through the loops of our main color on each side. And we're going to backstitch this together. So I like to start at the bottom and you can count the loops or not. I just eyeball it because like, shouldn't nobody be looking that close. So I'm gonna go in through, <laughs> through the V of one of my stitches here, through the fabric and out the back and I'm gonna grab what looks to be the corresponding V on this side of the work. Pull that up and through, leaving a little bit of a tail here that we'll weave in later. Then I'm gonna to go to my right into the next stitch and the next stitch on the back as well. Pull that through. And now I'm going to skip my next stitch and come up through the next stitch after that, going towards the left. So pushing through and through to this side. So this is what starts the back stitch. So I'm gonna come up that stitch 
And what makes it the back stitch is I'm gonna go back down one stitch back. So here's where I just came up from. I'm gonna go one to the right and down into the next piece of fabric. So basically where I started, I'm gonna come down. So for my next stitch, I came up through here. I'm gonna go two to the left. And this takes some time, so don't rush it. Two to the left, which brings me up here. And then back one to the right. Just like that. Up two. Just like that, coming up in the middle of the V. And back one. And what this creates is this beautiful sandwich of fabric together. So it's coming together already. It's a nice strong seam, but it is gonna take a little while. So here's the stitch I just came out of. Let me get you a little closer. Here's the stitch I just came out of right here. There's my working yarn. I'm gonna go up one, two. So down into this stitch and catch the corresponding stitch on the front side of my work. And then back one and down into the fabric on the other side, keeping that tail out of my way. And I'm gonna go slowly, skip two, or skip one, insert into the next, and into the corresponding stitch on the front side of the work. This is a great time to put on a podcast, listen to an album you haven't checked out in a while. <laughs> You're gonna be here for a bit, but the payoff is totally worth it. And into the other side. Continue to work on that and I'll show you how we'll finish it up. We're just going to back stitch all the way around our fabric. So coming in this direction, all the way up the side, across the top and down the other side. So I just finished my back stitch seaming. It's looking really good. Just be careful that when you get up into this corner that you leave your loop free. Right, so we're gonna back stitch into the fabric, but leaving this loop completely free. So now that all of my sides are connected really well, looking good, I just need to weave in my ends here on the bottom. So I wanna show you how I'm gonna do that just so it is as invisible as possible. So first thing I'm gonna do is weave in this short end. This was my end from the very beginning. Thread this onto a tapestry needle. And what I'm gonna do is just go under one loop of my seam here. And I'm just going back and forth under loops of my seam. Now, last thing, I'm gonna go kind of down into my fabric and kind of come up like this. Then that way, my end is nice and secure and I can snip it off and you'll barely be able to see it. Right, so there's that side. Now we can do the other side, which was my ending tail. So I'm gonna thread that back on there and I'm actually gonna send this one the other direction. So again, I'm just grabbing a loop of the same color. To weave in this end. And I like to make this as invisible as possible just so it just looks seamless and clean. We've done all this work to make sure our stitching and our blocking and our seaming look great. We are not going to slack off at the end weaving part because this is literally the last step. So that's enough, doesn't need to be too much. So you can see that this edge here is a little bit thicker. It's not quite as neat and tidy, but that's why we start on the bottom so that that unneat edge is on the bottom in the back and it looks great on the front. So now all three pieces are complete. And I'm so, so, so happy with this gorgeous, charming trio. Oh my gosh, look at that. 
Look at the towel. We got the pot holder. We got the cloth. What else could you ask for? It's perfection, perfection. Alrighty, my loves, that is a wrap on the Charming Trio. I really hope you enjoyed making it. I know I absolutely love mine. Now, my original set is going to a friend of mine for a housewarming present, but I cannot wait to make one just for myself. I'm thinking some nice neutral colors for my kitchen. I think that's the way to go. Now, I would love to see your projects as well. If you decide to make this, be sure to tag me on Instagram at TLYarnCrafts and also use hashtag TLYCMakers. And you can also share your project in my private Facebook group. Search TLYC Makers on Facebook and send a request. We can't wait to have you. Now, if you enjoyed this video or you learned anything at all, make sure you give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel. Like I said, your interaction goes a very, very long way. Thank you so much to those who are subscribed and welcome to our new subscribers. This community is better with you in it. Thank you so much for watching and I will see y'all next time. Bye. <laughs>